Hello and welcome to the Six Acre Farmstead. Um, here I am in the Golan Heights of Israel. Uh, my wife and I are taking a trip, pilgrimage trip to the Holy Land and I'm in the land of milk and honey and one of the things I've been looking for is uh, local honey. Um, and I've gone to a few shops and seen and in jars commercial there but actually we happened to pull off up here in the Golan Heights and we were still in, in Israel and to this overlook area with our, our uh, tour guide is with the rest of the group and I actually happened to our bus driver he knows I'm, I'm a big bee, beekeeper and in the honey and stuff there he has pointed out to me this guy who's selling local honey here at the roadside stand so um, I'll show you what he had to buy, uh, what he has, and I, I did buy a, a jar with some comb in it, about 40 shekels for, but uh, I think it's going to be worth it. I tried some other honey he had, this really darker honey, I think it's been overcooked or something, I'm not sure, it was a really sweet, didn't have a really good flavor to it, but I'm uh, happy to get the, the honey I did find. So I know, hopefully I can find some other locations and trying to find apiaries or trying to find hives, haven't seen them yet, um, but it's a lot of more of a a pilgrimage tour and seeing a lot of the, the sites and stuff there so uh, let me show you what he had on his table and we'll go from there <laughs> And that's the, some of the honey that I bought. The, uh, these here were about uh, it's good. 50 shekels. I bought one of the ones here with the uh, comb in it for uh, 40 shekels. Uh, don't know really the, the cost in US, but you know, I thought it, the uh, the darker one, I, I we tried this and it was like really like, overcooked and really had a, it really wasn't a, a great flavor, but it was, it was sweet and stuff there, but nothing that I was really in, interested in. But I did see the comb honey. Um, see these in one of 50-some shekels. I think it was a bit big for one of the transport and try to find some other jars there. But like I did buy that there. So, and this is the uh, individual bottom from. Uh, don't know his name, but you know, I'm always glad to uh, find another beekeeper and support the local economy there. So, that's uh, what I found. Hello, I'm actually here at the Dead Sea, um, and there's a happen to be a farmer's market shop here at the the Dead Sea area, and uh, happened to walk through here, and I found more honey and more bee products. So uh, some of the prices you may see are in Israeli shekels. So you figure if it's one U.S. dollar to almost um, like three dollars and sixty, three dollars seventy cents in shekels, whatever, to one U.S. dollar. So if you see the prices on these things, that's what it is there. But I'm gonna flip the camera around and uh, show you what they have here to offer. Alrighty, we can see here we have uh, turmeric honey. Uh, this is spirulina honey. We just mixed them together if I trials, I haven't tried them. Here's some honey in the comb. Here, this is uh, 72 shekels for that. And some bigger jars here. It's a 95 shekels for that comb honey, and I wish I could read this, but I have no idea what it says. So, for those who can, I'll go around and show that off. There's some more smaller jars here. 17, 27, 41. Um, over here, we have. Bee pollen, um, 100 shekels for that, and everything has it, they have to have uh, expiration dates on the top of that there. So I guess uh, November 26th of 2019 is when that expires. I mean, because you put it in the freezer, it'll be fine. Real jelly, 100 shekels there. Propolis, and. I guess this is a pollen honey mixture kind of thing, I would guess they're calling it. But yeah, it looks pretty I'm taking this a pollen honey mixture. And then I guess they have some Holy Land honeys here. There's some Jerusalem honey. And the flavor of Israel, I'm not sure. 
exactly while it's in there. As you can see, I'm not in Israel anymore. I'm actually in the base of my home. Um, it's been a while, been about a few weeks since we've come back from Israel, but I wanted to go ahead and conclude this video for you guys. Uh, going to Israel was a really worthwhile experience for me and my wife. It's something that she really wanted to do was on her bucket list. We got to go and see a lot of the religious sites, and that's really why we were there. But you know, we were there in Jan in January. Um, it was around in the the mid 50s temperature range, which the bees were flying where the bees were flying out there. Um, did, only one time that I actually see hives, and that was when we were traveling uh, toward the Jordan River, towards one of the baptismal sites there, that I actually got to see um, some lengths of hives, probably about a dozen of them on the side of the road, uh, and they were set up by this big, huge orchard. That's one thing with Israel, there is um, groves of trees, of all different fruit trees and banana trees, and tons of, of gardening and just it's everywhere because that's one of the main, they have to supply their own food, so they have to have, I guess, have to have bees there. But only one place that I actually saw hives actually set up. And I did never have the opportunity to go look for hives or to go really talk to beekeepers or, or inspecting that because that's not really why I was there. But it really did amaze me that I was able to actually see bees when I was over there, you know, in the land of milk and honey and to look on the honey side of things there. Um, one of the things when we stopped in the Garden of Gethsemane where uh, Jesus was praying, um, they actually see bees flying around there. It was really uh, a great moment for me you know, to, to actually get, feel, to think that, you know, even me as a religious person, and knowing Jesus prior to his uh, persecution, when he was gardening, in, in the garden, it was a night or whatever, but just think it was during the day of the bees flying around him and stuff there and not bothering him one bit. It was, I think it was pretty cool. Just being around, seeing some of the bees, and uh, one of the photos in in the video see prior, you'll see the, the bees that I found there. Um, also, when I went to the Museum of the Dead Sea Scrolls, I seen bees everywhere along the, the plants and foliage that was there, um, and that's where I actually was wanting to conclude the video, uh, and I'm going to actually add that to the end of this one here. Uh, but I was interrupted by a couple of young couple who's wanting to be photographed, but I had a limited time to do things because. We were moving from one location to the next location, stuff there, and we were on a time, time crunch. So I really didn't get to set up and do anything. By the time I got back to the hotel, it was really dark, and I didn't think it was really an opportune time to do that. Um, you know, it's for me. It's would I do it again? Yeah, but if I even go to another country, um, I'm gonna even mean it's just more open to look for hives and look, learn about beekeeping, and and you know, it was a, a side thing there. Um, I did buy honey, like I said there. I bought this jar here from uh, Nazareth Village here. It was like 30 shekels, a little small jar here. I tasted it and actually brought my, bee, brought my honey samples to my bee club there and we tasted them. This is like really commercialized, you can really tell. I mean, it, it tastes like honey, almost like a clover honey to me. Um, but I did want to come back with, with honey uh, from there. And as you see beforehand, the, uh, the jar here that I got from the uh, old farmer uh, from Golan Heights. Um, you know, you can see the excitement on my face and just the way I was talking when I was, when I was able to acquire this here. But there's one few things that I looked at and just made sure, and I'm going to explain here a little bit later in this video here. Um, you know, just to, to find honey and, and, and find out, you know, we, none of the hotels we stayed at, um, and I've seen pictures from other hotels and in the Middle East and Israel where they have the big frame honey, you cut out sections of chicum honey, there's none of the hotels I actually had that, which I was fine with, I mean I wasn't expecting it, but to find this chicum honey, and this, this is actually really good stuff here, um, and you know, it's something I'm going to savor and, and, and uh, really appreciate that, you know, this is honey that I actually got from the lane of Mocha Honey, Israel. Um, but one thing I want to bring to your attention with, with honey and stuff there, uh, if you ever go to a foreign country and you know you're going vacationing and you're as a beekeeper you want to bring back honey. Um, I found this out somewhat the hard way so I'm going to explain it to you now so you learn on your own. When you bring back honey, especially if it has comb honey, really look at it and make sure there's no larva in the comb. Yeah, you know that anyways and just making sure, don't, even if there was a, a, a little bit of larva and you're not going to worry too much about it in the comb. I don't know, that's not me, um, especially if you can see inside there, and there's no label on here, which actually helped me out a lot. When I came back into the United States, I flew into Dulles Airport in Virginia, and one of the first things you go through is you go through customs and you go to declare, did you hear me, um, 
what, what are you bringing back there? And I declared I had two jars of honey. And the customs officer asked me, did you, was there any comb in it? And I said, yes, right then and there. Um, it's, be, it's all on, you can say no, but I was being honest with there. I went to secondary. So if you ever bring back comb honey, you're gonna go to secondary. And the problem was, I was with a big group and we wanting to get home, it's been a long flight. And I was in secondary for about an hour before I got really um, waited on and can uh, get show my jars of honey. So if you bring back honey, don't have comb in it, but if you want to have comb honey, expect to be pulled from, uh, by customs officers. But one of the things that I, prior to the, when I met with my, my customs officer, when I had to explain what was going on, had to tell them where my honey was, pull it out of my luggage and show it to them. Um, and explain to them that I was a beekeeper, uh, many years of beekeeping, just let them know and I knew what to look for. And basically, when I was able to show them the jar and prove them um, that there's no insects, that's one of the main things they're looking for. They don't want you to bring any kind of insects or plant life in, from a foreign country into the United States. Who, know, uh, who knows what, yeah, and I know it's, it's beekeeping and bees and this and that, but I think it just it's a, it applies all across the board. Um, don't bring any kind of insects or bugs. So I had to prove that there was no larva in there. So looking through the jar, and you can see there was no larva or anything in the comb. Um, and when she accepted that and understood that there, she goes, enjoy honey, thank you very much. And it took a while to get through the final, get everything together, but didn't have to pay any fines, fortunately, or didn't do any of that there. But just keep that in mind when you're uh, coming back from a foreign country. If you're gonna bring back honey, um, and especially if it has comb in it, you're going to get pulled for secondary. If you just have regular honey there and there's no comb in it, um, they may pull you anyways because they're, they're not sure. Just expect that because um, a lot of beekeepers, you know, may, there may be some larvae bugs in it and they just want to ensure that, you know, even if they were dead, it, this is customs, I'm not going to argue with them. But, you know, this, uh, this trip was really worthwhile for me. Um, got to experience a lot. I, got to, I mean, it was really cool to see the bees out about. You know, looking for, you know, looking at all the different sites and looking to see if there's any any wild hives or swarms or anything. Yeah, but it was January and who knows if it be swarm season or what's really when, when the how beekeeping is there. But really didn't have the time to talk to anybody beekeepers or really look at because it was like you not move from one location to look next location next location because they want you to see everything while you're there. But who knows what the future may hold down the road if we go again and uh, what opportunities will be there. Um, but that's it from the Six Acre Farmstead. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a glimpse of my experience in the Holy Land of Israel, um, and especially my little small uh, interaction with beekeeping and finding honey and, and finding some bees there, which, which I thought was pretty cool. So until the next video, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Recording. <clears throat> yeah. Three, two, one. Um, this is about the end of my pilgrimage trip to Israel. Uh, one of the things that I thought of, I mean, what are you going to bring back? And I was says, well, I'm going to bring back honey and see about beekeeping because we're in, we are in the land of milk and honey right now. I'm actually at the Museum of the Scroll of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And, uh, you know, everywhere I go and I see the flowers, I'm looking for the bees and honeybees. And even here at this location here, I got bees flying around me, which is cool. That's why I sat right here. Um, you know, it all started off man, just keeping an eye on things. Went to Golan Heights and Cine, uh, some uh, a, far, a guy selling some wares at a roadside stand and bought some honey off of him. Um, from Bet Shean to uh, the Jordan River Baptistry, seen some hoves, hives the, on the side of the road. Uh, seen honey and honey products from the Dead Sea. I guess I'm about to record this a bit. Hold on.